People who have legally injured slash killed someone in self defense, what is your story? My great uncle lived in a trailer in a rural area of Florida. A kid 17 broke in one night and held him at Nefer Point. He had no money and told the kid that. He also told the kid to leave or he will grab the shotgun next to him. Kid charged and slashed him, then he shot him dead. They ended up charging his friend driving, get away car with the murder. Turns out they robbed several trailers that night. Chose the wrong one. Not me but my aunt. About 2 years into her first marriage her husband beat her black and blue one night. She didn't call the cops, didn't seek treatment, just went to bed and told him the next time he laid a hand on her she would kill him. About 6 months later, he did, so she did. He took a swing, broke two of her ribs, she grabbed a kitchen knife and shoved it into his eye. She called a friend who was a local sheriff's deputy, who told her to call 9 then immediately call a lawyer. No charges, the broken ribs helped prove self-defense. Here we are 20 years later, and that sheriff's deputy is now my uncle Gary, we go hunting together every couple years, when we can find time. My parents story, during their wedding reception, two men with masks entered, and announced Phoebe robbing them. Everyone thought it was a prank, laughed it off, and went on with the party. They pulled out guns, and said it was no joke. Everyone was on the ground on all fours, and they went around collecting wallets and jewelry from the guests. They came up to my grandpa I've never met him, and saw what looked like a wallet in his breast pocket it was a date book, and asked him to hand over his wallet. He said he didn't have one cause he didn't, and was punched in the stomach. My uncle looked up at the guy, and had a gun put to his forehead, and was told him going to blow your freaking brains out. My uncle grabbed the gun and turned around, pulling the guy's face into his shoulder. My grandpa and others tackles him down, and held him down. The second guy went running off, and my dad ran track on college, chased after him and tackles him. Him and others pin him down. Police come and everyone is excited that the ordeal is over. The cops say something like this is going to take a bit longer though, there was a death. Freaking out, my family asks who and find out the first guy was suffocated from being held down. Later it was confirmed he was on cocaine and died from something related to his heart edit. At first said ceremony, meant reception. This happened to my dad in Russia, back in the 90s, which were wild there. My dad is a big fat guy who can't fight for shoot. He'd recently gotten an 8 month old puppy, and he took the puppy for a walk. He was and still is a smoker of more cigarettes, I think they only exist in Europe. Two young guys walk up to him, and ask for a cigarette. He says he doesn't have any. Now that brand of cigarettes that he smokes, they are really long, and the pack is sticking out of his pocket. The young guys get pretty pissed, and one of them shoves dad. When my dad falls down, the guys take out a telescopic truncheon. Dad knows it's a losing battle, but he unclips the dog's leash, so he could swing the metal clip at least. Now, there is one important fact, that I left out about this puppy. He was a Caucasian sheepdog. At 8 months, he was about 75 lbs, and he went freaking ballistic. Both guys end up in IQ, one loses an eye. The cops want the dog killed, and dad has to pay a lot of bribes to keep that from happening. The dog ends up living a nice happy 13 years. Here is one of me and this pup, circa, 1995. He was a big braid boy, https, slash slash ibe, co slash big Obligatory not me, but my grandpa, but here goes. Grandpa was something else. Arrested several times during prohibition for running stills in the hills of Appalachia and other colorful sorts of stuff. Anyway, many years after that, he was in a bar somewhere in town. Some young asshole got in his face, as young assholes do. Words were exchanged, the young guy pulled out a gun, and he stuck it in my grandpa's face. Grandpa didn't have time to determine the extent of the young man's commitment to his actions, so he decided to pull out his gun and kill him right there. Cops were called, witnesses were interviewed, and grandpa was free to go. I was working as a bouncer at a gay bar downtown, had this drunk skip out on his tab at another bar and they called our bar to warn us. Sure enough, he was sitting in one of our booths just kind of existing. Manager that night tells me to haul his ass out, because he's not welcome, so I do. 
He then stands outside the door I'm working just non-stop yelling next to me, constantly poking at me, and insulting me, and kicking my ankles, dumb childish shoot. At one point he grabbed the cord for my earpiece by my collar and snapped it, so he got a solid boot to the balls, and dropped to his knee for a minute or two, then went back to being a complete and utter dildo, like he had be I am very patient, he was annoying, but I have a little brother and lots of younger cousins. So he was no worse than what I had growing up. This lasted a good half hour or so before out of nowhere. While I'm checking IDs I feel hands around my throat and they start to squeeze. Didn't even think. Just spun around. Swung at face height. Popping him solidly in the mouth. And grabbed him by the hair. And bounced his face off the brick wall next to me. Four or five guys who were watching the whole thing grabbed him, and has just standing there still throwing insults at all of us in a complete drunken state, blood running from his face, and like a gift from above a police cruiser does a roll by, and I flagged him down real fast. Cop gets out, asks what's going on, I give him a quick rundown, he asks what happened to the guy's face, I told him I punched him, and bounced him off the wall, after he grabbed my throat, cop cuffs and stuffs him and I never saw him darkening our doorway again. I'd like to think he sobered up in the drunk tank and reassist his life, but he probably just went to be obnoxious at a bar without a doorman. Not me, but my dad had to knock someone out with a pipe wrench. My dad was in his mid-twenties, and had just started up his HVAC company. It was late at night. One of his customers called about his tenants complaining the air was out. At 3 a.m., my dad, as a recent business startup all on his own, got dressed and went out on the call. He got there, and fixed the act, and when he was leaving it was a bit of a rundown, poverty stricken area. A man who was clearly drunk thought he was with his girlfriend who was living in the house my dad just worked on. My dad, obviously, was like no, him the HVAC repair guy. Dude pulls out a knife and charges my dad and my dad simply swings at him with what was in his hand, which was a wrench. Knocked the guy in the temple, and he was out cold. Dad kinda panicked, and jumped into his van and sped off. Nothing ever came of it, so I assumed the guy was okay, aside from a massive headache. I'm a medic and firefighter. We got called to a Rolliver accident New Year's morning. Obviously a drunk driver. It was 3am. We were first on scene, walked up to the car, and found a gun pointed at my face. I grabbed his arm. Smashed it into the A post repeatedly. My partner didn't even know what was going on. The guy dropped the gun. I told me partner to get it. And I ripped the guy from the car. He's screaming I broke his arm. The police get there. I tell them he had a gun. And pulled it on me. They grab him. And throw him in their car. He was arrested. Taken to the hospital. So his arm could be splinted. Was charged with driving impaired and assault. Please guilty and went to jail for a couple of years. Not me but my grandpa, when he lived in Mexico he owned this one ranch where during the day he had workers to maintain it, because it was really big space and there was lots of cattle, horses etc. Anyway one night he decided to stay, and sleep at the main house in the ranch he has his main house an hour away closer to the city, and has his sister maintain the ranch house, right before he went to bed someone snuck onto the property, before he decided to get alarms and other security systems and the man tried to steal some of the money in the main house, that he knew, was there because he was friends with one of the workers, and was working with him to try and keep the money. He sneaks on and my grandpa was still awake about to go to bed, and he sees him from the second story window creeping up to the house, and sees an object in his hands. My grandpa goes, and grabs his shotgun, and goes to the front porch and yells at him, and he just charged. My grandpa aimed the gun and shot him in the chest. He also ended up firing the worker he found out was working with him. Grandad was in the navy stationed in Panama after WWII. One day, he and one of his shipmates were out patrolling, or on guard duty or some such, when a local kid runs up, and says there's an American in a bar nearby and has about to get killed. So my grandad and his comrade follow the kid to the bar, and walk in to see an American sailor all cut up, backed into a corner holding a chair over his head, surrounded by a couple of locals with knives. Grandad scans the room and sees a pair of Panamanian cops in uniform sitting at a nearby table just watching and laughing. He tells the guys with the knives to back off, and one of them turns, and lunges at him, so he shoots him in the belly. 
Immediately, the cops jump up reaching for their sidearms, but Grandad's buddy shoots them both right around the same time Grandad shoots the second knife wielding attacker. So maybe 30 seconds, after they walked into the bar, four guys are dead. They got caught martialed, but somehow came out without so much as a discharge. Not sure how, or why. I need to get around to seeing, if I can find any records on it. Also, my grandad never met a story he couldn't embellish, but I have a feeling this one is true. Head talk about horrific violence he experienced at Iwo Jima till the cows came home, but he did not want to talk about Panama. Not me, but my father. Back in the 60s, he was at a small town bar with a friend. The friend was playing pool, and won a bunch of money off some guy head just met. So the guy goes out to the car, gets a gun and kills my dad's friend. Everyone in the bar kind of jumped on the gunman, and my dad kicked slash stomped his head with his steel toed work boots. The guy died in the hospital, but my dad was never arrested or charged with anything. He doesn't talk about it much. The only reason he told me was because I made a stupid joke about shooting someone, and he wanted to teach me why it wasn't funny. Yes and no. Had a drunk guy chase me to my car and punch me in the mouth so hard my teeth punctured my cheek. I ended up breaking the guy's jaw, so I was the one charged, because I didn't have any actual damage, and he had a broken bone. I was charged with aggravated assault, and ended up taking something like a plea bargain, to avoid both going to trial, and having a violent crime on my record. If there had been a camera in the parking lot it would have been obviously a case of self defense, but it was my word against his, and he had hospital bills to prove it. I had to pull a gun on 4 men who ambushed me, while I was delivering pizzas. I was on the phone with 911. They came close it was pitch black outside I let my gun shine in the light of my car, yelled at them to leave. When they saw the gun, they all stopped, backed up and got in the car, then sped off. Then I stopped delivering pizzas. I was living in Queens, while attending Fordham U in the Bronx. Came off the train one night, there was a young busker at the end of the platform rapping about how, if everyone just gave a little money god would give a little back. I looked straight ahead, ignored him, tried to power walk past him. In a small female, he was a much bigger man. He grabbed me by the arm, and started trying to charm me for money. I was pulling away, trying to make him let go, he won't. I started screaming, and then I just started stabbing him with my keys. I always carried my keys with the tips, stuck out between my fingers, because it was a not so nice neighborhood and I always got home late. It didn't kill him but it hurt enough that he let me go. This little immigrant woman had been coming up the platform and heard me screaming, so she came running and started hitting him with umbrella. So now he's on the ground bleeding, and being sacked about his personage by a 75 year old Ukrainian woman who introduced herself to me as Olga. Police came, arrested him, gave me and my new friend a pat on the back, and a ride home. Fortunately it was the only time I was ever assaulted, when I lived in Queens. When I lived near campus in the Bronx it was a lot worse. My rumored was insane. I dated the wrong girl years ago in high school, after we broke up she said I hit her just, so we are clear, I didn't. A couple of guys including her new bf came up to me, and sucker punched me as I walked by, at the time I was figuring competitively in Thai boxing, but not talking about it much. I cracked 6 of one of the guys ribs, it was all on camera, and I promised, to not press charges if they didn't. My punishment as it happened on school property was that I had to go say sorry to him at the hospital. My smug as words exactly were I'm sorry I cracked your ribs after you and your friend punched me. When I was 22 I was at a show at a bar watching my friend's band play. After they finished their set I moved to the back to be near the doors to help them with moving their equipment out. It's very dark and everyone else is still up closer to the stage. Suddenly, someone I don't know grabs me from behind, in a big bear hug, and starts to drag me back towards the doors leading out. I, without thinking at all, drop my weight, manage to slip out of his arms, whirl around, grab his hair and slam his face down into my rising knee. I can still to this day feel his nose shatter as I hit him. He stumbles backwards, blinded and covered in blood. He's rather quickly grabbed by my friends who had seen him attack me, and the cops are called. 
He's arrested and taken to the hospital, where it turns out I broke not only his nose, but also fractured his cheekbone. For context I'm a girl, and around 110 lbs. I've never been in a fight, or have any real idea how to defend myself. I'm certain the only reason this worked, is that he hadn't expected me to defend myself in any way, it was entirely the surprise of it. I don't think it would have worked at all had he been prepared. Edit for structure. Obligatory not me but somebody I knew. My cousin killed her ex-boyfriend, because he was abusive to her son. I only met her once or twice, all before this event took place. If my memory serves, she's was former army or marine corp, and saw some action in the middle east. She was a very small lady, maybe 5 feet 1 or 5 feet 2. But she was tough. She bear hugged me, and picked me up off my feet the first time I met her I would have been 6 feet 2. 150 pounds. I was tall at a young age. Anyway, context aside, she had to kill her ex-boyfriend. She was a gun owner, and I guess one night he was trying to break in. Ended up successfully getting in, and she plugged him full of holes. They brought her into custody, just for the preliminary investigation, but it wrapped up pretty quickly, because it was pretty cut and dry that she was defending herself. I haven't seen her since, and I have heard very little about it after this happened maybe 4 years ago. That's the story. Not very climactic, but enjoy anyway. I've told this a few times, but it's the only answer I got for threads like these tl. Doctor I got some owns babidity arrested, because I refused to deliver to a specific part of town as I kept getting mugged, and since I was the only one stupid enough to keep going I decided enough was enough, and he tried to follow me home, to kill me slash hurt me. He got arrested for outstanding warrants and I went along with my life. Then some girl comes to my door asking if she could borrow my corkscrew for her wine. I assumed she was my neighbor, and since I didn't want her running off with my corkscrew as it was in this weird multi-tool my dad made me, I just took the wine bottle and walked to my kitchen. I heard the sound of a pocket knife and turned around. She starts shooting off about how she's going to kill me for getting her source of money arrested. I had a really bad day and was just tired, so I conked her upside the head and she crumpled to the ground. I call the police and an ambulance, and tell them what happened. I get arrested, since they can't verify what happened, but I was released not long after, because I knew all the cops, I wasn't on drugs, and plus my neighbor's security camera caught her pulling out the knife, and approaching me, so it was enough for them to go yeah, checks out. Don't know what happened to her though, but I stopped caring. This is only legal, because they were both 9. But he'll tell the story if my sister. Some little boy was threatening to kick her in her private parts over and over at lunch. So what does she do? Tell a teacher? Leave. Ignore him? Nope. God bless her. She picks up a pencil and stabs this kid in the thigh. We are talking full she let go. And it's still stuck in his flesh stab. My parents had no idea how to deal with it. Because she felt seriously threatened and was. In some capacity. Defending herself. But obviously they can't have a 9 year old stabbing people. In the end, they both had to write apology letters. Sister was suspended for a day I think. A few of my friends got her some sweets and told her always stand up to boys doing stuff you don't want. Just don't stab them. She's now 12 and in the gifted program with a few social problems. But otherwise, a happy kid. The guy I do work for was being robbed at gunpoint in front of his house. His younger brother heard some yelling and seen what was going on. He runs outside with a double barrel shotgun shoots the robber and the robber shot his brother. Robber died my buddy has a pretty gnarly scar on his stomach and back. The younger brother had absolutely no remorse whatsoever and still doesn't. Obligatory school story with no idea if it counts. In 7th grade, there was this quite large fella that liked to push me around and punch me unprovoked and for absolutely no reason. One day, I snapped at him, cussing him out and punching him. Of course, him being larger than me, I immediately take off towards the bathrooms and hold the door, expecting him to try and enter. Nope, he holds the door so that I cannot get out. We stay like that for a few minutes, but by perfect timing, in an attempt to get out I kick the door, just as he lets up. He got knocked out clean, dropped on the floor, and had to be carried to the cafeteria. He spent about 2 weeks in hospital after that. 
I didn't get into trouble because of what he had done to me before. My proudest childhood moment. My wife had to talk to the principal when one of my children got into a fight. The principal told my wife that my son had a broken arm because some kid assaulted him with a club. My son, who has had martial arts lessons from my brother, actually fought with the fractured arm and gave the bully shattered teeth and lots of bleeding.